this is kind of off the record. This is just something Dave's been processing. So uh, there's a big homeless issue here in Portland as there is in a lot of cities around the world. And so at first, as you just say, you're driving to the airport and you're seeing these kind of tents, you know, in the bushes. And you're like, oh, there's just tents. There's people living in there. And then you might see some cops and then there's a bad guy in there. And you're like, okay, yeah, great, whatever. But then as like, as homelessness becomes closer to you and you actually start to see it more, you're like, oh, there's a person there. There's actually a person sleeping in there. And especially if you kind of see him and kind of get to know him a little bit, like, wow, that, that, that's kind of scary. And this is when you're really like, okay, I'm done. There's there's kids in there. That's when you're like, okay, this is, I don't care who you are. There's definitely, this is definitely an issue when there's fucking kids there. And that's really, really sad to see if people of, of all different ages, not just little toddlers like this, but they'll be teenagers. You're coming from a very bad abusive family, bad circumstances that are just have nothing to do with you. And this is like, this, this is where it's like, we want to save the victim card for the real victims. I don't want to be playing victim in my own life. These are real victims. Because there are going to be times in life that you or your loved one, like you are going to legitimately be victimized. You're going to legitimately be in a bad fucking spot. So you don't want to be crying victim your whole fucking life when that card actually comes around. You know what I'm saying? Seeing a lot of young people that just just not able to keep up with society. Uh, you'll see this, right? Where it's like two young people like, let's just start off with camping and we're FI in love. And like, this won't be around in five years, you know? Like, these two are headed towards just absolute destruction. Like, they'll rip each other apart long term. It's not like you're going to see uh, older people doing that that have been on the fucking streets for 20 years. It'll, it'll just bring out the worst in you. And that's sadly very true. And then you get the uh, the hippocampus, right? So kind of like, look at what this guy's processing, right? So this is a guy, you know, probably my age, a little bit younger. Looks like he's probably a contractor or something like that. Like, very capable guy. Probably lived in a fucking, you know, house and had a dog and family and a truck and all that. And just processing like what the hell happened. And from watching like a lot of homeless videos, there's a channel I was watching, uh, Invisible People. I used to watch that thing like obsessively for a couple of years. What I saw with uh, a lot of homeless people when he asked like, hey, how'd you get here? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm running my business. Everything's fine. It's usually like about three things. It's like, then I fell off the roof and sprained my ankle. So I was kind of out for a second. And then like I was behind on my truck payment. I lost my truck. And then it's usually like my mom got sick with cancer and I had to stop and take care of her. It's usually something like that. It's usually those type of three things all in a row on one year, like boom, boom, boom. And they're like, and then all of a sudden uh, I, I came home one day and the bank was here and I couldn't get into my house. And then like the first day they're like, wait, am I homeless? And like then th that day turns into two days and then they're just like in shock of like, oh my God, what happened? And then when your hippocampus has hit that fucking hard and you're just traumatized out of nowhere, it's like, go get a job. He's like, uh, yeah, well, where do I mail my paperwork? And I don't have my car. And and then just the shock of it just sends your brain. And then you only got to spend how long? Is it a week? Go sleep outside. How long until you're now just like getting stuck? It just gets harder and harder to get out. If you get into it, it's so, so hard to get out. So anyways, where I'm going with this is uh, what I see with a lot of people is that they'll yell at the government They'll yell at a crime. They're like, oh, you know, there's these simple solutions. This is back to fixed mindset, panic state, the opposite of the scientific process, right? So it's like, oh, the home, the problem with homelessness is this, blah, right? And it's just one or two things. And then what they need to do is this, blah. And it's usually just one or two groups need to do one or two things. And then, then, then everything will be fine if they just listen to my one or two grunts, right? But the thing is, it's such a multi-level thing. The thing that I really am seeing in reality as I'm getting older is that we're not as far out of the jungle as we realize. Like we think that we're in some utopia, like a thousand years when we're, we're united with the aliens and everything's fine, everything's equal. Like we're not there yet. We're closer to a thousand years ago than we are a thousand years in the future. Meaning like we're just barely hanging on as society. Like everybody that you see in the fucking cars, like they're just barely making it. Just like you're barely making it. They're also just barely making it. I'm talking to people way above me socially, it's like, the common message is they're all just like, yeah, I'm barely fucking making it. And so it's like the city of Portland, everybody wants to blame them or whatever city, insert your city, the government figure or whatever, just go do this. So it's like, what's interesting, Portland is now like, oh, let's actually start uh, doing something about homeless. You're like, okay, wait a minute. Wh what happened? Like the, the homeless po problem has gotten just worse and worse over the years. And you guys have done, you know, as, everything that you can. All of a sudden there's a jump where they're like, okay, we might start making camping illegal. What happened? And that's, that's what I'm going to, why did this person get canceled? Why did Alex Jones get canceled? Why did Andrew Day get, get canceled? Was it really the Illuminati? Was it really the Matrix? Was it really this giant conspiracy? I know that's what I want to believe is the stock IJNI, but I'm like, is that really what's going on? And again, the common thing that I'm seeing is the FE. Like Andrew Tate and Alex Jones largely got canceled because a wave of angry people were emailing YouTube, Twitter, whoever's running the place. And then that company is like, 
I don't want to deal with this. You're freaking out my staff. Who is this person? Get rid of them. That I say is like the largest factor. Not that there is not that isn't all the other factors are also very. And again, I don't want to be anti-scientific and say that that's the biggest one. It's like I'm seeing that as a very, very large factor with all of these other factors, any factors you see also added in there. Just saying, hey, add this one to the equation. And my opinion is I think it's a rather big one that when the tribe starts complaining upward, that's when companies move. Like look at it like at your school. Like once all the parents unite and they're like, fuck you, that's then when the school like, okay, we'll change after years of bullshit, right? What happened here in Portland is, is the disability community were like, hey, we can't get up to our fucking things because there's fucking shit all over the sidewalk and I can't just jump and run over it like everybody else does. They just fucking run through it. I'm stuck slow motion in a wheelchair and you know, fucking help me out here. So the, the, the disabled community is now suing Portland, the city going, fucking clean up your sidewalks. You know, like, like just like, hey, like give us a ramp, give us a thing, give us a clean sidewalk and the city's like, fuck. We now have the disabled community fighting the homeless community and now we got people yelling at us from all sides God damn it. Now that we have enough complaints, finally, I guess we'll do something about it. And now that we don't want to say no to the disabled community, we're going to have to say no to the homeless people. So it's like, wow, that's what it took? I, I had to go get there. And this is like the FEs are like, yeah, duh. Like, that's definitely how you do it. You just go find the right group to complain latest and loudest more than that group. And that'll socially move the tribe. Candidate for governor, Betsy Johnson, supports the idea of banning unsanctioned camping in public. If there are services, sanitation, a nutrition, the opportunity for some enforcement, the opportunity for medical professionals to come to one place instead of having these dispersed camp um, enclosures that are basically lawless, I'm all for it. This idea comes after the city is getting sued for not keeping the sidewalks accessible for people with disabilities. I know that the litigation has um, put the city in a position where they're taking us very seriously. Now see? Portland residents on both sides of the river are reacting. I think it's a step in the right direction. I think the devil's in the details. There's a lot of questions. Oh yeah, Obviously, Doug guy. Richards lives downtown. He hopes the next governor will support Mayor Wheeler. I love that that guy just, he said real quick, he's like, yeah, the lawsuits is what's putting the fucking city. Like, oh, look at that. Once there's enough pain on you, oh, now magically we'll fucking do something. And it's like, I, I do personally, not to, not to like throw my opinion in there, I do think that having the, uh, the, the the camps where it's like everybody can kind of come together. I think that's a great idea. Now, the problem is when I've, when I've watched a lot of videos and documentaries on that is that then just turns into like kind of a project situation. There's people like extortion, pissing, shitting, you know, causing problems, staying up late, drugs. When you, when you get homeless people into a city type situation or all in one focused area, then it's like, okay, who funds very, very heavy security? That's when that kind of drops off is due to the, the lack of security because the interdynamic people issues day in day out around like let's just look like a facebook group imagine that in real life you'd have to have a lot of moderators that's where they're like look th this is now costing just hundreds of millions we can't afford it and then it just collapses back in the street that's kind of what i've been seeing over the years over the decades right and notice here this is just some guy this is some iscj guy i would allegedly guess he's got the iscj mustache glasses the devil's in the details etc well the my point i'm making is like a lot of times when i when i run up the hill and i find the bad guy now, I know he's just some guy just giving his opinion, but when you go to actually look at who is the city, you know, it's guys like this, you know, just some dope doing the best he can. It's guys like this just going, I don't know, this is my point of view. I, I, can I go? I want to go uh, fishing with my son this weekend. You know, it's this crazy fucking gobbly lady. It's like, so there is no like bad guy. I just find a bunch of scared dopes. They're like, oh God, now I'm getting sued over here. So I guess I'm going to run over here and do this, right? And then that idea is going to fall apart anyways. It's not like their homeless camps are going to work out. I think eventually... In a thousand years, they will. Let me just jump to that real quick, just to leave you with a stupid slide. So uh, Spiral Dynamics, I fucking hate it. And every time somebody mentions it, I just want to delete the email. But the concept of Spiral Dynamics, I do believe it to be true. I was talking to a guy a couple years ago and he had just mentioned that to me. He's like, hey, as, and he was a double observer too, INT, I, ISTP guy. He's like, hey, as much as there's like craziness in the economy and the AI, and this, like, like society is still spiraling up. Like we're gonna go through hard times, we're gonna go through the COVID, we're gonna go through the AI takeover, we're gonna go through all sorts of, you know, the world's gonna end next year. I promise it's gonna be next year, right? I get it, I feel it, I've seen it. But unfortunately, statistics show that history has, we've kind of been going up, you know? And so the the, the spiral dynamics, I think they kind of they, they kind of get into this, they're trying to process this, they're trying to kind of define this a little bit. Now you can get way down the rabbit hole of this, but just to keep it general, right? Just to keep it general, it's more like a long time ago, you're just dealing with more basic stuff and then you're moving up. It's like you're gonna get your more global vision, synergy, you know, happiness, uh, universal income, just all of that equality type stuff that we're all kind of being able to see at this point, like that's still yet to come. It's still hundreds of years away, in my opinion. And I see so many of us having so much frustration because we're like, just clean up the streets, just do this. Like, hey, 
racism, LGBT. It's like, hey, you're talking about something that's going to need another thousand years. We're getting there. I get. I swear to God, it's not as bad as it was a thousand years ago. It's really not, and it's not where we want it to be. It's not where it could be. And so it's this weird, this weird tension of like, keep pushing for what the ideal, keep pushing for where we need to go. But then part of you has got to be reserved of the here and now. Going, I'm not going to be in the generation where I see homelessness end. 